Mahathir Mohamed, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Uh, you left Prime Ministerial Office in 2003, yet you're now leading uh, the campaign, the Save Malaysia campaign, against the current Prime Minister, Najib Razak, who was once your hand-picked successor, your protege. Why? Well, he's gone off track. He's done a lot of things which are actually wrong. And uh, as a result, he has um, put the country in a very bad position, economically, politically. It is also getting a bad name throughout the world. So he has to go. And you've accused him of corruption. Uh, Prime Minister Razak would say he hasn't been found guilty of anything. He would say that he was cleared of corruption by Malaysia's Attorney General back in January, who said the $700 million that was found in his bank account, in the Prime Minister's account, was a donation from Saudi Arabia. But you don't accept that. He has not been found guilty of anything, simply because the At Attorney General refuses to reveal what was reported to him and merely said that he has nothing done nothing wrong. And the Attorney General, recently appointed by him, seems to be clearing him on every issue without revealing the basis of his uh, decision. The spokesman for the current Malaysian government has accused you uh, of political opportunism and desperation. He says if you want to change the government, quote, follow democratic process and await the next election in line with Malaysia's laws. He's right, isn't he? You have no right to overturn the 2013 election result which returned Prime Minister Razak to office, do you? That would be a coup. The government is not uh, going according to the laws of this country. Whenever somebody reports on the misdeeds of the Prime Minister, the man would be detained, questioned and charged before a court for some laws which are not related to what he has uh, done. But in a democracy, and Malaysia claims to be a democracy, shouldn't the people kick out a prime minister, not the former prime minister? No, the people has a right to do that, but he has closed all avenues for redress. The people cannot even speak. The newspapers do not publish anything about his misdeeds. And if you go to the parliament, to try and move a motion of non-confidence, he has a grip over the, uh, his party, which is the majority, and they will never support a vote of non-confidence. So there is no way we can take action against him except by trying to make it well known to the people of Malaysia and the world that he has done a lot of wrong. You have said that Malaysia can no longer take the corruption of the current government. And yet there was corruption on your watch too, wasn't there? In fact, you only fell out with your own Deputy Prime Minister, Anwar Ibrahim, after he went on a campaign against corruption and cronyism in the late 1990s, which ended up targeting many of your allies, including your son, Mirazan, who was allegedly trying to get a government bailout for his shipping company. <laughs> it is all the accusation about that. In that case, they are open to proof that that is so, but they have not proven. But what is the, the evidence that I, uh, I was corrupt or I corrupted people? There is corruption in every country. It is a level that counts. I admit that during my time there was corruption, but not on the scale that Najib is involved in, running into billions and billions, tens of billions of Malaysian ringgit. That has never been done or heard of in this country. That's a fair point. But it isn't just opposition politicians who made those accusations against you in the 90s. It was academics, uh, NGOs, journalists who publicly complained that your sons had stakes in or sat on the boards of over 200 Malaysian companies. Some would say if you're so worried about corruption, why not look closer to home? After I stepped down, there were attempts to look into my past by the following governments, but they couldn't find anything wrong with my administration. Otherwise, they would have hauled me up in court. Of course, during my time, people will say that people cannot take action against me. But please remember that when I was heading my party, my party was declared illegal. I had a tough time trying to rebuild the party. And there are many decisions of the court which were against me. 
That was possible during my time. It's not possible now. You say that, and yet you were also accused of interfering with the judiciary. Uh, all of the things you complained about under Najib Razak, some would say, started under you. The consolidation of executive power, the crackdown on dissent. Uh, you said in a recent interview that you don't feel proud of Malaysia anymore. But should people have felt proud of Malaysia back in the 80s and 90s when you were using the Internal Security Act to detain without trial hundreds of opposition party members, NGO leaders, students, artists, scientists, intellectuals, shutting down newspapers? Yeah, they accuse. But what is the evidence that I did anything wrong? If I'd done anything, anything wrong, now that I am powerless, they can take it up in the courts of law. I have no say in the courts of law. But do you deny locking up people without trial under the Internal Security Act during your tenure? Do you deny that? Yes, it was after riots, after pe policemen were killed. Four policemen were shot because of some uh, uprising by uh, Islamist uh, fundamentalists. But all those people were released within two months. Mahathir Mohamed, before we finish, I have to ask you about your relationship with Jews and the Jewish people over the years. Uh, you've made some pretty offensive, inaccurate, some would say undeniably anti-Semitic remarks. In a speech in 2003, you said, quote, the Jews rule the world by proxy. They get others to fight and die for them. In 2012, you wrote you were glad to be labeled anti-Semitic and that sympathy with Jewish victims of the Holocaust was wasted and misplaced. Isn't it the case that your political legacy, your accomplishments, will forever be tainted until you apologize and withdraw such anti-Semitic remarks? No, I believe I'm speaking the truth. You look at America. It is totally de dedicated to supporting Israel even when Israel commits uh, international crime. In fact, uh, candidates for election need to, uh, to inform the Jewish lobby that they are supporting but Israel. why are you conflating Israel, Israel with all Jews? All the... Why are you conflating Israel with all Jews? All Jews are not responsible well, why for not? Israel. Why not? So then should, you, should all Muslims well, be conflated in, with in, ISIL? In America, American Jews mostly support Israel. Mahathir Mohammed, should all Muslims be conflated with ISIL then? If, all, if everyone is collectively held responsible for the actions of people in their faith? No, it shouldn't. Because if we are not working in that direction. What I said was that the Jews are ruling the world by proxy. That's and an that outrageous proxy, claim with no uh, evidence. Of course, how can, you say that, of how can you say that Jews are ruling the world? That is an anti-Semitic uh -huh. conspiracy theory, is it not? <laughs> My, if you re refuse to see evidence, what is then your evidence? I can help you. What is your evidence for the fact that Jews are, quote, ruling the world? Jews are not too many. There are not very many Jews in this world. By themselves, they cannot rule this world. But they can influence countries to do the work for them. And America is very much under Jewish influence. That is why it supports Israel, whether Israel is doing the right thing or not, whether it commits crimes or not. Israel does all kinds of horrible things. OK, but your very reference to the Jews, many would say, is anti-Semitic. We'll have to agree to disagree on this. One last, well, one last question. What is the future of Malaysia in the next five, ten years? Well, uh, if Najib is there, this country will go to the dogs. The economy will fail. Politically, this will not be a, any uh, democratic in any way. This will be a dictatorship because he has just passed, passed a law which gives him power to overrule or to disregard the parliament, the king and everybody else. He decides if he wants to jail anybody, he can jail that person. And if later on it's found that he has done something wrong, the law says that you cannot take action against the person who did this deed. Your former biographer, Barry Wayne, uh, the former editor of the Asian Wall Street Journal, uh, he wrote that when you left office in 2003, you put Malaysia on the map. You had put Malaysia on the map in terms of its political standing, economic prosperity, infrastructure, growth. But he says you also left behind the problems of corruption, inequality, and politics decayed under your brand, your personalized brand of governance. What do you say to him? A country that is corrupt cannot make progress, cannot develop. But even Barry Wayne couldn't 
uh, deny that during my time, this country grew very well. It became very prosperous, and people were happy to support the government, my government, in every election, five elections, and I won by two-thirds majority. Mahate Mohammed, thanks for joining me on Upfront. You're welcome. Thank you.